Well, OK, really, a week goes by now without letters from all you Quo fans, right, threatening mayhem if we don't have the band on the programme. <laughs> so, in answer to so many questions, it's a pleasure for me to welcome to Whistle Test Francis Rossi and Richard Parpit. Welcome. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? It's very Good nice Bob. to see you. Particularly at this time, <clears throat> Francis, which is a milestone for the band, isn't it? Fifteen years in existence yesterday. Yeah, since the, uh, since the first gig of the band. We always take them the first gig. It's probably a bit longer, but it sounds a bit too much to say that. From the first gig was about fifteen years in a terrible... The cricket club. Cricket club, yeah. Dulwich. Nice stage working men's club. One of those touches, I'm afraid. <laughs> got me badge. I got me badge. Got we've got, we've uh, found <coughs> a marvellous photo actually that comes from '62, around that time, from Butlins. Yeah, four good-looking boys. <laughs> Everything goes this down. This is about the time that you joined the band. <coughs> right? I wasn't quite in when that picture. That's the one up the telegraph pole. Or something, no, that's the it? one. No, it's on the monitor. See? Oh, that's, that's the one. one. Yeah. That's a Gibson. That <laughs> yeah. Mother Kelly's. Look, I see? was watching when that picture was took. Actually, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. we got booed out of there. <laughs> yeah, I know. How did you get involved with the band at that point, then? Well, I was sort of, I was with another band down there, a little kind of trio thing, you know. Oh, no, Same come on, what was it? No, Maybe I won't trio. tell you the name of it, it's a terrible name. And uh, I'd sort of got pally with everybody there, and I was right into the bass player at the time, believe it or not, after we left for about a year. And then the manager at the time, he was a plumber, good-looking bloke, though, <laughs> and uh, thing, he that. said, do you want to join? And because we needed another voice, believe it or not. And ever since then, I've had a terrible problem of singing in the studio, so I was never this voice, but, uh, you that know. Was it, <laughs> the, the band needed a voice at the time, didn't yeah. In the gas showroom, they told us. <laughs> it was true, underneath the gas showroom, they said, you need a voice in this band. With the contract's blowing down Lambeth Walk. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you should yeah. drop them everywhere. We've had some time. So how, how did you <coughs> first get involved in the, in the business? I mean, lead up to match the because I know you were working with Madeline Bell. Just yeah. before yeah, we had all that was when Richard was with us. We had to get, I mean, to get a gig was amazing to have a gig, you know, we had to do a, a sort of a soldy type set. That was the time and it was all. And uh, we used to do gigs back in people. We did Tommy Quickly, mm -hmm. uh, Guy Darrell, and we did Madeline Bell. Mm -hmm. And she was amazing to work with. She's like really, she came in and said, Well, down in the gas showrooms again, under the, in the basement. And she said, What you got? I'll, I'll do whatever you've got. You know, and she used to do numbers with yeah. you. Did it we were doing a kind of uh, a soul set at the mm. time, really. And uh, she fancied <laughs> doing all of that soul set, you know. Mm. So that's what we did and mm. went around the working men's clubs up, or up Manchester, you know. And it was great fun, actually. She was really good. Yeah. So, how many stabs did you have before Matchstick then? Um, many singles. It was I Have Nothing. Early Gurdy Men. Early Gurdy Men. That's about three, I think. Yeah. And then Matchstick the Men sort of went. <laughs> there was a trough after that as well, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, what? A trough. You yeah. <laughs> hit hard times through all 69. <laughs> yeah, sure did. <laughs> it was just one of those things, I think. It was a good job it did because yeah. I don't suppose we'd be where we are. Mm. So, is that right? I suppose so, yeah. That was, yeah, yeah. was around 1969. Mm. Late 69. It got really unhealthy for us, <coughs> particularly. Yeah. Did the whole business, couldn't I Couldn't work well. anywhere. Yeah. Everybody seemed, the whole business seemed to be flat. This seemed to be a, it was a summer. It was a summer. <laughs> it's yeah. good, isn't it? Not really. No. It was the summer, and uh, all these gigs, everyone said, oh, the gigs are going broke, everyone's gone away, the usual stuff, when you can't get work, everybody's on holiday, that's what it is. Sorry, so many people split. I just flashed me bad, it sounds rude. Don't <laughs> Go on. Yeah. And all these bands were splitting up, and we didn't know what to do, so we just kept rehearsing in this pub. We, th we still thought we were wonderful, so it's, you know, wonderful, yeah. aren't we? Because talking oh, about yeah. the, the business, Francis, you know, I mean, a lot of people are saying at the moment, me included from time to time, that the Stop business it. isn't at its most healthy right now. I mean, has it changed? I mean, have you noticed an enormous change since you've been working? I don't. It seems we seem detached a little bit now because you get you get out of the thing of being um, when you're when you're a club band or when you're into a club thing, you seem more in touch with it. I think mm. this is why you, when you get a new wave, everyone says, "Oh, this new wave thing's happening." Everyone hopes it does, you know, because mm. you say it needs more. But I don't know. It's it's difficult. I think it, yeah, it changes all the time. One can't keep up, really. Mm. One can't. <laughs> Four can't. I'm telling. Yeah. I must mention you. Thanks. That's Rick. Rick. Oh, yeah, my English shirt. Get it out. Yeah. Get it out. Got it off Big Kev, didn't I? Big, big Kev. Number seven. Big, or Little back. Kev, as I am. Yeah. Number seven. Oh, go on. Flash go on. it. Flash it. Go on. Look at number seven. Tea stain on the front. Yeah. Terrific. Which one? Did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> So listen, Rex's just, microphone. Because I'm going to surprise you with a piece of film as well in a second. But, but before mm -hmm. we look at that, just plans into the future now. What's happening next? Oh, we're about to do an album, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Are we? Mm -hmm. We're thinking of doing an album. I suppose a, a British tour. We need to do so. Mm -hmm. And then we start sort of um, Japan, Australia, and Europe all over again. You know, to say what's going to happen in the future, apart from basic tours and same as what everybody does. You do an album, you do a tour, and you, you go on and see what comes tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, you come back. Yeah, you never know. You might ask us again. He might. 
yeah. yeah, rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's beginning to run. You must mm. link us into this because this yeah. was your first appearance, I think, on Top of oh, the Pops. Oh, not the thing at oh, Top of the Jacket. The, 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 the Beatles aircut, isn't it? Pictures of Matt's then. Got that ring, got that ring? Oh, that's good, isn't it? First time on telly. Well done, but look at that. Wait a minute. He's clean. Look at that. I've got to get off of here. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going. <laughs> so different, isn't it? Oh, nice. 